Hi scholars, today we're going to talk about radical equations and that word radical basically just means that we have an equation that somewhere in it is going to have a square root. This could be a square root of a variable, could be a square root of an expression, more complicated expression, and then right we could have other uh, things going on. We could have an x here, we could have a 3 here, we could have another square root over on this side, for example, right? So anything um, where there's an equation uh, with a square root sign somewhere in it, that operation, uh, that's a radical equation. And the key idea with radical equations, there's one fundamental key idea. And that is if I have the square root of x and I want to get rid of that square root, I want to unpack it, right? Right now, it's sort of tied up behind the square root sign and I want to get rid of it so I can just have x because if I have x I know I know how to deal with x right then we're then we're back in our in our comfortable world so to get rid of a square root sign you do the inverse operation which is to square that thing okay so we're gonna see this coming up um, in the three examples we do today so example number one nice and easy square root of k is equal to 5 what's the value of k well, before we even solve it, this, this question is really asking, the square root of what number is equal to 5? And the answer is 25, right? The square root of 25 is equal to 5. Uh, and so that's the first step where we just want to think about the problem. Take a second to just to think about it, see if we know the answer offhand. And now we're going to say, well, how if I didn't think of that, how could I possibly have solved it from here? And well, the answer is I have a square root on one side of the equation and I want to get rid of it. So let's square it. Now I can't just square one side of the equation. I have to square the other side as well. So square root of k squared is equal to k. That's the whole point was to get k alone. And I'll be darned, 5 squared is equal to 25. So pretty easy. All right, let's keep going. The square root of the quantity m minus 4 is equal to 7. Okay, a little more complicated. Now inside the square root sign I have um, an expression, right? A binomial instead of just a, a variable term. Um, and But we're going to solve it in the same way. Again, before we solve it, this question is really asking the square root of some number is equal to 7. What is that number, right? That would be the that would be what is inside here. Well, we know that whatever is inside here, we know square root of 49 is equal to 7. So whatever this thing is has got to equal to 49 right so uh, m would equal 53 so again if we don't see that let's just do it explicitly let's square both sides just like what we want to do so we did last time and I have that m minus 4 is equal to 7 squared which I'll be darned was 49 it's just what we said and I can solve this equation right now it's just a simple linear equation m is equal to 53 okay if I plug the number 53 back into this equation, 53 minus 4 is 49, and the square root of 49 does indeed equal 7. All right, let's do one more problem that's much, or it's a little more complicated. x equals negative 3 plus the square root of the quantity 2x plus 21. Now you may be tempted to say, let's just square both sides of the equation, right? Let's square this side, and well, this is everything right you can't just square this little piece we'd have to square everything right and we can see um, just from imagining actually squaring this entire uh, term out right sort of like a, a binomial term uh, we can imagine that the first term and the last term they would be good but these middle term would still have a square root in it okay you would still have after you did all the work you'd have some numbers plus some number of square root of 2x plus 21s, okay? And so that's problematic because you wouldn't really get rid of the square root. So we're not going to start this, this solving this uh, radical equation by squaring both sides. However, right, our goal is we should be thinking, I wish that I could get just this all alone, right? If I can get this, the entire square root alone, then I could square both sides. Well, we can do that fairly easily, right? Let's add 3 to both sides. So that's our first step, okay? So it's an additional step. So I have, now I have that the quantity x plus 3 equals square root of 2x plus 21. Now I'm in business, right? Now, if I squared both sides, 
that'll get rid of the square roots once and for all, okay? So the right side is pretty easy. So that's just uh, 2x plus 21. That's the whole reason why we just squared. Uh, we get rid of our square root sign. And here, well, I gotta remember how to multiply two binomials, how to expand that. And this is just going to be equal to, um, yeah, we can keep it in purple x squared plus 6x plus 9. It's a perfect square trinomial, okay? And now I'm left with this equation. What do I do? Well, let's get all everything. It looks like it's a quadratic equation, has an x squared term in it. So let's get um, all the terms over on one side of the equation. So I do x squared. Let me take away 2x from both sides, right? So if I do minus 2x, I would end up with plus 4x. And let me take away 21 from both sides, minus 21, and that would leave me with a negative 12 equals to zero, okay? So again, we're just moving right uh, the right side of the equation over to the left side of the, uh, the equation, and this looks like a quadratic that I can factor, okay? x, uh, let's see, has got to add to uh, four, multiply to negative 12, I think x plus six and x minus two are gonna do it for me. And finally, we end up with that x is equal to negative six or two. Okay, so this is where we are right now, and you may be tempted to say, phew, that was a long question. Let's move on with life, move on to another question. However, uh, another key idea when we're dealing with radical equations is you always have to check your answers, okay? So let's start with two. So I'm gonna plug in x equals two. This is my check. I'm gonna plug in x equals two into this original equation. So here, let's do it with a different color. So I have our negative six and my two. So this would be, does it, is it true that two equals uh, negative three plus square root of two times two plus 21, okay? So we're doing our check. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 21 is 25. The square root of 25 is nothing more than 5. So this whole thing is really nothing more than negative 3 plus 5. So is it true that 2 equals negative 3 plus 5? Yes. So 2 is an answer. Now we're going to check negative 6. Is it true that negative 6 equals negative 3 plus square root of 2? times negative six plus 21, okay, plus 21. Well, two times negative six is negative 12, plus 21 is, this, is nine, okay, so this whole thing right here is nine, and the square root of nine is three. So is it true that negative six equals negative three plus three? That is not true, so this is incorrect. So in fact, x equals negative six is what we call an extraneous, it's an R, an extraneous solution. It's an extra solution. And we may ask ourselves, wait a minute, an extra solution? We've never done equations before where there's like an extra solution that doesn't work. Where did that negative six come from, right? So where it comes from is the fact that when we square Right, this step right here, when we're squaring each side of the equation, we're losing some information about the sign of these two quantities. Now in this case, the sign, S-I-G-N, right? The sign, right? We're talking about are they positive or negative? In this case, it's positive because I don't see anything here, right? But this value of X, Right? It could be negative, right? And if it was negative, when I square it, right? When I square this whole quantity here, I don't know after I square it if it was negative or if it was positive, because no matter what, it's gonna be positive, right? When I square a number, you end up with a positive number, positive value. And so when you square, this is where extraneous solutions come from. So the take home message is you always, always, always have to check your answer. Always have a great week.